All right, good evening. Welcome to the New Fane Select Board meeting. It's Monday, April 15th at 6 p.m. I'd like to welcome everyone for being here. For Select Board, we have Mike Fitzpatrick, Katie Johnson Applin, myself, Angela Litchfield, our administrative assistant, one out of Howling, and Austin Rice from BCTV, and our road foreman, Jay Wilson, and from the Planning Commission and BC, uh, DV Fiber, Jane Douglas. Our, has this meeting been properly warned? Yes, it has. Thank you. Are there any additions or amendments to the agenda? No. Hearing none, we'll go right to the approval of minutes, which we need to table since we don't have people here that were here to approve them. So we'll put those on the next meeting. And good evening, Jay. The road foreman and commissioner's report. Hello. So I heard from the trucking company for the Adams Hill Road Bridge. He expects to hear from the insurance adjusters late this week. If not, he will contact his supervisor and ask them to move it along. And I explained to him again that it was kind of a big hit to the town to pay that much out and we'd like to get it moving. So hopefully he said to call him again Friday. So I'll call him again Friday. Excellent. Thank um, you. The people that paint the crosswalk speed limits and stop bars will be in town one day this week at night to paint our stuff. It may even be tonight. I don't know. They they watch the weather, and when it looks good, they'll appear in the middle of the night and do it. Um, nothing new on the Green Iron Bridge work from Fitzgerald Engineering. They've started work on it as of uh, a week and a half ago or so. Um, nothing new on the gravel pit. The new engineers are working, um, so that's at least moving forward. Um, we are still planning to have another salt shed meeting to discuss replacing the engineer and trying a different shape building something. Um, but they haven't been able to schedule that with everybody yet. So, um, and I reached out to the town attorney again for the loop road easement. Um, it was basically completed. All he had to do was put a couple finishing touches on it and get it back to me like three or four weeks ago. I still don't have it. So. Um, I don't know if you have any suggestions. It's Michael that's been working on it. I can try calling. We'll look, discuss that after. Yeah. That's it? That's it. Motion to approve the road Harmony Commissioner Thank report. You. Thank you, Mike. A second? A second. Thank you, Katie. All right, discussion. We'll start with number one. Anything? Thanks for staying on top of this. Anything from yep. anyone else? Yeah, I... Um, look forward to that reimbursement. <laughs> be My nice. gosh. It... Okay. Number two, we might have fresh paint tomorrow, so that would be fun. Do or they sometime? Jay, do they like blow off debris before doing that so that it's nice and clean? Mm -hmm. Cool beans. Uh nothing on the green iron bridge or the gravel pit. Look forward to hearing about the salt shed meeting. Do you have an idea when that's going to be? Uh, no, not yet. It's um, our V trans person and um, Margo from Windham Regional. Um, we just have to schedule a time when everybody can get together, and we just we'll probably just do it over Zoom again or Teams or whatever they use. Do you um, want a select board member to be part of it too, or just you? Can be. There's nothing exciting yet. We're hoping. Um, we're just trying to figure out how much it's going to cost us to stop where we are and start all over, you know, basically. Um, so that's the big thing is the state's got so many projects that are on hold because of the, the hoops they're making everybody jump through to build these. And mm -hmm. so they're trying to figure out um, how to help the people through it without spending double what the building should cost. Well, if when you find out the time and date of that meeting and just send out an email, maybe one of us could be a part of it. Okay. Just to listen and hear what you We did. did have a discussion at the road foreman's meeting that Wyndham Regional ran last week. And a uh, um, couple of the, the towns that had done the, like Brattleboro and Guilford had done those hoop buildings and had good luck. Um, so just trying to figure out something. So those are those plastic gate dome things. Is that what yep. they're uh, like a fabric? Um, I believe he said 
I think it was Guilford said theirs was a 25 year cover on it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we look forward to hearing more about that. And number six, the town attorney. I'm also awaiting several emails from the town attorney. So, um, if it's all right, I can respond to one of my emails about the Manitou project and the, um, Parish Hill Bridge project. And if I don't hear anything, I'll let you know on it up for you to follow up. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Yeah. And I can also put in a plug for your to get back to you. Okay. All of the above. It's going to be time to start the project pretty soon. I know. Do you want to CC me yes. when you email it? Or are you calling? I may call. Okay. So Parish Hill, Manitou. And the loop road. Loop road. Yep. So I'll make a call tomorrow and follow up with an email. Okay. And maybe I'll just include the both of you to the whole thing if I don't hear back from them. Yeah, Great. I emailed them again. I emailed him ten days ago, and then I emailed again today. Um, so I'll call because I'm dealing with Bob Fisher. So I'll call and ask to speak with Bob and see if he knows anything about the loop road easement as well, because we want to get started on that. Okay. Excellent. And just one other quick thing, the, um, there'll be a couple preliminary things going on this week and next week for the loop road project. To, um, we had to uncover some, some spots where the, um, cement encasement is for the fiber optic. And then the following week, the guy should be there to do the soil testing with the, with the boring do some boring Here's and do some soil testing. Letting Ed know when these things are happening. So yeah. he's, yep. he's been involved with it. So <laughs> anything further for the road foreman? If not, all those in favor to approve the road foreman and commissioners report say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Seven. Is there anything to do with this? Moving right on to that. Okay. We do the report first and then we'll go into those. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jay. And let the guys know that we appreciate all of their hard work. Well, and with that, we'll go into the gravel and ditch stone bid. Uh, Town of Newfane invitation to bid on crushed gravel and ditch stone. The Newfane Select Board requests bids for the following crushed gravel. The gravel needs to be 1 to 1.25 inch crushed. Ditch stone needs to be eight inch crushed. The gravel is to be delivered to the town garage in Williamsville on Depot Road, as requested by the road foreman. Inspections of the gravel will be conducted by the road foreman and the road, sorry, road commissioner and the road foreman before the bid is awarded. Sealed bids plainly marked as crushed gravel bid or ditch stone bid will be received by until 3.30 on Monday, April 15th at the Newfane Town Office. All bids, bids will be opened at the select board meeting on April 15th. The board reserves the right to accept or reject any or all bids as is in the best interest of the town of Newfane. Okay. Gravel and stone. <laughs> all right, we'll just start with this one. We have quite a lot this year. This is from Gordon Services, Gordon Gravel and Stone from Jaffrey, New Hampshire, Gravel Bid 2024 for three quarter inch crushed gravel, 27.5, 2750 a yard. Okay. What was the total size? That's all it says. Twenty seven fifty years. <laughs> AS Clark and Son, Town of New Bain, we bid twenty eight dollar per yard for four inch to eight inch ditch stone delivered to the town garage. Excavating twenty eight seventy five. What's that for? 
gravel or stone? Crushed gravel. Hi, Kate. Welcome. JP trucking and excavating, 33.25 per yard, one to 1.25 inch crushed gravel to the town garage. Renowned Gravel Inc. for crushed gravel for E50. What was that one? That's thirty dollars and fifty cents. Okay. For crushed gravel. Gravel. And now I think we might be into ditch stones. So just to, I want to keep it kind of separate. You can make a pile of those. Is that, that what these three? Our ditch stone and these are gravel. Yeah. So the S plus was so stone. According to my note. They're yeah. all that's ditch stone. Yeah. It might be backwards. Let's try to open this one. Oh yep, yeah. this is twenty from AS Clark and Son, twenty-three dollars per yard for the crushed gravel. So we'll put this in ditch stone. So our bids right now are from A.S. Clark, $23 per yard. I thought you did gravel. I'm doing gravel. Gravel, yes. But, but the ditch stone was, it was oh. backwards. Okay. So A.S. Clark and Son is $23 per yard for the crushed gravel. Ward and gravel and stone is $27.50 per yard. J.P. Trucking and Excavating is $33.25 per yard. Derrick Excavating is $28.75 and Renaud Gravel is $30.50. Um, I make a motion to go with A.S. Clark for the gravel at $23 a yard. I thought they said that they want to check it out before they award the bids. Oh, okay. So yeah, we can, we can, um, there's not a rush on the gravel, so we'll between now and the next meeting, we'll go to check all those out and okay. see what they look like. So we're not um, awarding it tonight? Don't have to. Um, with the gravel where it can vary so much, it's probably a good idea to to check it first. Okay, okay. So that is all the crushed gravel bids, and you'll go out and check those, great. Yep. Okay. Ditchstone, A.S. Clark & Son is at $28 per yard. We're now at Gravel. For Ditchstone is $34 a yard. And Sir Sosimo. Is twenty two dollars a yard of CY FOB and then thirty one fifty six CY delivered. The, can you explain the difference there, Jay? The, what we asked for was a delivered price to the garage, so that it would be the thirty one. What was it? Thirty. Thirty one fifty six. Fifty six. Okay. Okay. So and you'll check on those. Did you need to check on those as well or no? Well, stone um, doesn't vary as much, so, and we've been, let's see. So the one, we, what we've been using for the last year has been Clark's and that's been fine. Um, so there's not much variance in the stone, it's, it's crushed stone. So um, if you want to award that one, that's fine. But the gravel we'll check on for next meeting. Okay. So the bids are AS Clark for $28, Renowned Gravel for $34 and Sir Sosimo for $31.56. Did you say both for Gordon? That, Gordon? that their price was $27.50 a yard for both? I just want to double check if I heard that right. Oh. Oh. 
Gordon. Gordon. Gordon was the first one you read out. He's Gordon was just gravel for okay. 2750. So we can go ahead and vote on the ditch stone. Is there a motion? I make a motion to the clerks. I second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Ayes have it. Great, and then we will award the crushed gravel at the next meeting. That sounds good. And how's the access permit for Dean Wilson's property? So I talked with him today and he's not ready to commit to whereabouts he wants it. So I said, asked him if he wasn't in a hurry and he said no. So um, he's doing the subdivision now and when he gets a little closer, then he'll maybe by next meeting, he'll have a better idea where he wants to put the driveways in. Okay, so, great. So you'll just let it's, us it's going to be two separate driveways. So one out was just going to copy the permit. So we have two separate permits to, to go on. Great. Anything further for our road foreman? As always, you do a great job. Your crew is a great crew, and we are very thankful to have such an amazing crew. So thank you. Thank you. Was oh, I will. I, yes. One more thing, quick. I will have. Um, uh, let's see, Hunterbrook Bridge going out for some riprap work. Um, I'm waiting to meet with the state bridge guy on the bridge at Grout Road, which is really a box culvert, but they call it a bridge. Okay. And um, Roy Brooks Bridge, the undermined abutments, and. Um, uh, the net, the bridge up by um, Prescott's, that needs a little bit of riprap work. Um, so we'll have those going out to bid, hopefully in the next, if I can get an answer from the state, or maybe in the next week or 10 days, we'll have those out to bid. Okay. So, and then we'll have an emergency grant for um, Stratton Hill Road, as soon as that gets put through. So there's another chunk of that's trying to slide, so. Also, um, have you begun drawing up for a new person? Nothing yet. Um, I I talked with Juanetta. I did talk with the insurance guy and there's quite a process. So she, he's gonna come down and meet with Juanetta and tell her how to get through the process. Great. Excellent. Anything else for Jay? Thank you so much. You have a good evening. All right. Good evening, Juanetta. It's time for the administrative assistance report. Okay. I have the 2024-25 contract from the Linden County Humane Society. It's a holding facility. The currently contract expires June 30th, and this will allow the animal control officer to drop off stray or seized animals. The fee is the same as the three previous years at $534. We received a reimbursement check for $108 for impound fees for 30 animals that were taken during the 23-24 um, contract. I attended the April 9th VLCT Zoom training before grant writing and have registered for the open meeting law tomorrow. This will review the basic requirements of the law. I am also registered to attend the Wyndham Regional Housing Resource tomorrow night at Newark Fire Department from four to six. I shared the comments and concerns from Baum and Madavi reviewing the proposed re revised website presentation. This is still scheduled for May 6th meeting. Have you had a chance to review these comments and are you still interested in seeing his presentation? Is there a motion to approve the administrative assistance report? Make a motion. Thank you, Mike. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Katie. Discussion. Let's just do the let's go in a row. Human <coughs> society contract. Is there do we all need to sign? No, there's just one place for a signature. 
Is there a motion for the chair to sign the contract? I'll make a motion for Second. the chair to sign. Second? Yep. Thank you. All those, any discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. <laughs> Opposed, sustain. Uh, second, thank you for taking all of those. That's wonderful. Uh, number three, sounded like you had a question. Um, I, I did read the email that you sent, Bobman's um, thoughts were good. Um, the, the group that you found for the website is not the same one that I learned about. So I think we should compare the two of them. And I will try to find that information among all of my information that I have at my house. So maybe if you two could get together um, before the next meeting. Well, listen, yeah. part of the comments was that Bauman would be able to do the website if he was allowed yep. six to eight weeks. And it, it kind of makes sense where he's been our website to mm -hmm. manager and he does it as a service to us. I think, in and my opinion, part of the community, yeah. we, we should allow him the time and put forth ideas to him that he can review. Mm -hmm. the, one, the one aspect that I keep pitching on is the, um, well, I'm not going to remember the right acronym, um, the ability for people to who are hard of hearing or have visibility uh, vision issues being able to access and navigate the website ADA compliant. Thank you. That's the correct one. Um, and I, um, I know that this, the one that I had looked into does have that compliance. It also has a back door for us to quickly uh, upload stuff. Um, those were selling points for me when I was going through their okay. stuff. It's, so I'd love to look into them and figure out who they were again and, and bring that. Have you talked with Bauman to see if he has that capability for those? Because I, I really like what Bauman does for the town and he is an incredible person that does a lot for the website and the town itself. Right. I, I, and you, I, can, you can give me the ideas and we can work together and then yeah. present it to Bauman because I, I asked him if he would be available for right. the May 6th presentation so he could give input mm -hmm. if you still wanted to go through with seeing their ideas and then take bits and pieces and, and discuss it with Bauman. So. Okay. <clears throat> um, we can figure all of that out for sure. Um, that sounds good. Yeah. Right now, leave it on until... Maybe the three of you can connect and decide. Mm -hmm. And if it's a different company, maybe we can push that down a little bit and have a different presentation if it's a different company. Okay. But still invite Bauman to come in and express. Yeah. I think his input because is very valuable. It is. He's been working on the website for years, and I'd hate to not have him be doing it because he is wonderful mm -hmm. at it. So. I Navigating our website is not simple, and it does need help. It's that part I think we can all agree. <laughs> well, uh, yes. It's yeah. As an addendum to the report, um, the listers gave me um, an abatement for the no. number ten Flynn Road. We'll do that after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is there anything further for the administrative assistance report? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Ayes have it. Thank you so much, Juanetta. I appreciate all of your hard work. Thank you. And now, the listers. <laughs> That's this. Yeah. This one. And it's um, basically to show you how they figured out what the amount of the abatement is because they paid all for the complete year. So they took the date of the fire mm -hmm. and then. Um, the value of the structure that was lost so they're actually only getting a so it says house fire on 321 24 total loss of garage apartment value of destroyed property 73,700 102 days of tax year to be abated 
for the destroyed property amount to be abated is 476.14. And that's for this tax year? Oh. Yeah. Only so far? Will they ask for another it, one next? Uh, like, so are they will be reassessed. It would be reassessed, yeah. Okay. So um, for the record and for the treasurer, in order to place and acknowledge the um, the rebate, I highlighted the bottom so you could just make a motion and sign and then show everybody or just one signature needed? This shows one. Okay. Is there a motion to have the chair sign? I make that motion. Is there a second? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, ayes have it. Thank you. Anything further for Juanetta? Moving right along. I see we have the Planning Commission here. Do we have a committee yeah. report? Uh, we do. And uh, we have some small updates. We are waiting on um, language for the bylaw modernization. Um, thank you for that. I think they must register for the BLC. Mm -hmm. Not the BLC, sorry, the Southern Vermont Economic Development Summit. Um, and we wanted to be here to let you know in person that we had sent you our nomination for the zoning administrator positions. Um, I know we weren't able to get it um, to vote on it in time for your packets and agenda on Friday, but we wanted to come here to make sure that you received that nomination <laughs> as quickly okay. as we could. So we um, we voted to nominate Katie Bristol for the zoning administrator position. Um, we have all spoken with her. She attended a special meeting with the full planning commission to answer questions, tell us about her experience um, working with blisters and her interest in zoning and kind of making it work for everybody in the um, So we have nominated her and now it falls in your court <laughs> to proceed. I think it's a great movement for her and, and Merle seemed to be receptive to the whole idea as well and interested in getting her trained. So I'm sure once we approve that nomination, they'll get started. Yeah, did you I'll want to see the email? Motion, do you make the motion? Okay. Is there a second? Um, I'll second that. Any discussion? I have a question about her ability to assume the position as a non-town resident? I don't believe it she has to be a town resident to be the zoning. Okay, as long as that part's cool, then I'm... Well, Merle's not, is he? Well, he lives in the red region. The zoning administrator doesn't have to be in the mm -hmm. in the residency. Okay. As long as that part's okay, then mm -hmm. glad with it. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of appointing Katie Bristol for the position of zoning administrator to succeed when Merle Tessier retires, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, ayes have it. Thank you so much. Yes, can I add one more comment? I, I don't know how the hiring and payment aspect of that all works, but I know that Merle has really generously offered and is really focused on transferring as much knowledge as he can, and I, I don't know how it's handled, but I would encourage the town to like, if, if they're paid for their time to do that, like, mm -hmm. they're paid for their time to do it, because I think it's it's really important and mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know if the plans are leaving until the end of June. Right, right, he's been, he's been like. And I do believe they're in on the same days anyway, so yeah. it would all cross-reference. Yeah. I so. think we've discussed it a little bit. I mean, Merle, Merle recommended her to us, and we just thank you, Angela. We have a little bit of her <laughs> <time> <laughs> <for connecting. laughs> I, know. Um, I think the listeners don't want to lose her, but um, I take that in the best way possible. So, yeah. In Merle's request for money, he did in, did supplement that as part of it, the training purpose. Mm -hmm. Right, and so it makes it that so. she would be paid because he wants to train her and I should mm -hmm. spend a lot of time with her as I understand yeah. it. And I, it's totally out of my valley look. I just think it would be great for us to be that. I do believe that we should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, anything further? Mm -hmm. It's the new thing, the new committee, considered a committee. Mm -hmm. Under the committees, or am I the unscheduled public? 
Uh, it's not a town committee. Okay, I'll be to It's a there. separate group. You can speak. Uh, I'll I'll holler at you next. <laughs> <laughs> After our folks from Rucka. <laughs> Okay, and with that, we'll go right into our folks from Rucka. Good evening. It's good evening, Pamela Spalding, right? Pamela Spalding, yes. Thank good you evening. so much for having us. Glad to have you back this year. <laughs> Once again, we come asking if we can come. Bye, Kate. I think he's right. I'll be back. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Once again, we're here to ask if we can have a coin drop on July 20th with a rain date of July 21st. We'll be in front of the town green like we've had in the past. We think in the past has been very successful for Rucka. As you know, we don't receive any state or federal grants, so we apply heavily on grants and fundraising efforts. Um, we're based on three pillars, advocacy, and as of 2022 and three years previously, we have raised over six million, or we have won over six million dollars for the veterans and VA and uh, Social Security claims. And while that sounds like a huge number, you'd have to understand VA math to understand the benefits. It's a great deal of documentation, a great deal of legwork, and in some cases, our uh, veteran service officer has actually had to go to court to help the veteran win his claim or her claim. Um, where our counselor uh, does one-on-one -on -one and group counseling, we also have an AA group that meets at the, uh, our organization. Outreach uh, is our organ uh, part of the organization that helps veterans keep and maintain their families and housing. Unfortunately, I do not have time 23 numbers for you, I only have 2022. But as uh, from January to April in 2023, outreach provided $10,539.46. And for that same period this year, it's $13,162.56. So what our veterans need to help keep and maintain them in housing is increasing as everything else increases. Mm -hmm. We also have a food and clothing sh um, food the shelf that at one time gave almost six tons of food and clothing. In the past few years, that number has gone down, but it still remains that some of our veterans are home, uh, I think the correct term is food, food insecure. Yeah. Um, so once again, here we are. Any questions? Board of it. Thank it's you a great program. Yeah. Uh, did you reach out to the court to see if you could set up on their front? Yeah. First, I have to get permission from you. <laughs> then it goes to the state state police, then the Department of Transportation, oh then goodness. your certificate of liability, and then it goes to Millie. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. So crazy. And that's just to put up the pop off for her. Yeah. Is there a motion? To I make a motion. To I hardly second that. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 You have it. Thank yeah. you so much. And Thank with you our much. pleasure. Whatever it is. has the self state self addressed envelope to oh, or the letter to send it off to. Perfect. That sounds great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Appreciate it. Thank you for all your hard work. Right. Thank you. Wish you all the best in July. <laughs> and congratulations <laughs> on your good diagnosis, sir. Thank you. That's wonderful. Glad to hear. See you July 20th. That's my birthday. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. And with that, we'll go to unscheduled members of the public. Good evening, Jane. Hello. Uh, which hand do I have? Oh, one thing in your community. You can you correct um, On behalf of you, thing I'd like to thank the select board for uh, for the generous offer of uh, money for upgrading the sound and lights, which we tested out the old ones on Saturday night, and we definitely need new ones. But uh, it was Saturday night. It was fantastic. It was. Uh, 
humdinger of a day. The town was hopping, the new Fane Hall was hopping. It, it was great. I we you know reached our standing room only capacity and had to wait until a few kids went home because it was past their bedtime before the next round of people could get in. That's it was it was really great. The lights and the sound that were used Saturday night were brought in by um, the band themselves. Yes. So the Union Hall in Newfane has no lights and sound at all. So they were brought in and yeah. for what they were, it was great. Yeah, so oh, an upgrade yeah. would be totally. Yeah, and especially the sound system, you could really tell, you know, when they had just two speakers up front and you have to crank them up pretty loud, and, you know, rather than having a good sound system going around. But it will be really great. The next concert is a singer songwriter on May 11th. And uh, we thank the town for its support. Thank you, and we thank you, and your community volunteers and the band group for all that they're doing. Um, what it, um, how is the progress with getting all the things and getting that in? Do you have a timeline for that? I, I don't know for sure. I'm not sure who's... Uh, who's Greg Piccolo is working with a couple yeah. different people on getting the stuff. He had given us a proposal with figures right. and they're still yeah. working on it. So it may be through this midsummer. Gotcha. Yeah, hopefully some. If this summer we can do something out on the, the common, if the weather is fine, that's the hope. We, we will yeah, be out there. But uh, there's already been a walkthrough with an electrician to make sure everything was going to be good. So awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. it's going. I believe it's the same people who do the lights in uh, mm -hmm. so Yes, it's good. It does are great. So. It's work in progress. It's coming along. But that was the first one, and it was a hit. Yeah. So we put out a donation pot. We did very well, nicely. So, uh, we hopefully, we won't have to ask for any more art and money for new family. And we did right? food and beverages down in the kitchen, which was also good. <laughs> yeah, cool. we had it all going on. It was great. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here too. <sighs> Well, I just want to make sure that, you know, sometimes you go, guys do a lot of the money and you don't hear back. Yeah, that's really, true. That's it's fun. really making a difference. So yeah. it's going to spruce up that home. Well, it's good to see people do stuff. It is. It's, um, yep. Both part of it. Well, thank you, James. Yeah, they're thank very you. different areas. <laughs> and we appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> what do you do? Oh, you want my DV fiber? No. <laughs> I've got to learn to say no more often. Right? People look, people keep I asking. Ask first. We need to, oh. Jane, we need to start that committee. Oh, which committee? The say no committee. <laughs> <laughs> Just say no, kids. But that's how our town thrives, is for people like everybody that joins the groups and makes everything happen. So. I haven't even begun to work on the cemetery issues, so. <laughs> you got time. I got time. <laughs> Well, thank you so thank much. You much. Take the rest of the night off. Drive careful. Uh, any new business? Any old business? We will table number one, two, and three since they're not here. Uh, personnel policy update. So I wanted to talk just a little bit about how to proceed. We were suggested by VLCT to add an nepotism clause, um, which I understand the necessity for it in plenty of spaces around town and larger governments. Um, but to me, it seems like the feasibility for that in a small community with limited participation as is mm -hmm. would be a hindrance and not a help, especially, and I just don't know how to proceed with that. Um, so I'm I'm hedging on no, but I'd like to hear what both of you think about that. I agree. I wouldn't put anything in. I, mean, um, I think we're too small. The people who so participate is hard to find. <laughs> yeah, the people who do participate tend to be the folks who have been in town for a very long time, who are interconnected in so many different ways that I just feel mm -hmm. like that would be problematic. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to check, <laughs> see what everybody else thinks too. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Um, 
And at the last meeting, we talked about overtime and having it pre-approved. Right. And I emailed the LCT, and they said it's a good de good idea to have it in the personnel policy. And I can email you the language that they sent me. Thank you. Non-exempt. And then maybe we could have something at the next meeting that we can actually sign. I'll email you that language. Thank you. Uh, I'm accept it, please. We'll see. <laughs> and the hourly employees, such as the road crew, would go through Jay anyway, which is what he does. So the the one other point that I want to talk with you about is um, whether or not our elected officials—that's the town clerk and the treasurer who have served now for mm -hmm. multiple years, you know, full-time employees, okay. full-time employees who have, they are stuck at two weeks of vacation. Is there any way that with time served, they can increase that? Do we have the power to do that? Can we write it's it in? question for the LCT and then um, we can discuss it. Because they're stuck at it. They've been doing it for years now and they should, I mean, that could, yeah, go, that, that could go away if it changes and they're back to two weeks until time served. But, that, but I'm not sure we have the authority to change right, that since how they are elected yeah. officials, so we would need to talk to the LCT and ask them how to proceed. How to but proceed. elected officials, are they just not elected they're employees? Only, they're only given two weeks of vacation. For employees? For, yeah. Right. But, they've been, but they've been in office for years being reelected, they don't have the for the right for the elected people you're talking about for the yes. two elected the two people who are full time yeah see that's what i say you know we, we think this one all the time and that's why we tried to go with a charter so we could hire the town clerks and the mm -hmm. treasurers and whatever else like that because you know their salary is set to tell me mm -hmm. right and if they wanted to, they could take that salary the day after tell me. Sure as long as they get that work done throughout the year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's what I, you know, I've talked to different ones when they're doing that, and they talk about uh, the vacation pay and all this. I said, you don't really get a vacation pay, it's all in how you spread your money out. You don't get a so said vacation, you don't, we don't pay them anything above that salary. Right. We don't pay overtime, we don't pay nope. above that. Like I said, their money is, they're elected, and, you know, we don't even have to pay insurance to them all. Right. That's just a, that's another benefit to them. So, I mean, it's, that's a lot. We always tried to change it, you know, a few years ago, we tried to change that to, the select men would be the ones who did the hiring on that, because it, it actually would secure the jobs more, too, you know. I mean, anybody right. wanting to, you could come in and run for any one of the offices, so I might not even have a clue what they're doing there, you know? And you can get voted in, you're stuck with them. Yeah. Well, At I least. think it's worth a phone call to DLCT just to see what they have to say, and then we can revisit that. Yeah, you know, surely we're not the only other town, the only town who has elected officials who've been in office for years now who would like to have more time off. <laughs> right. And be allowed to do that. Well, I think you have to go back and vote on it at town meeting. Well, because, like I said, your budget, their budget is set that day. Yep. When we put it through our budget, their thing is set right there that day. Would that, but that wouldn't change their vacation time. I mean, they don't. Talk see, that's what I'm saying. See, the salary doesn't change. So before we have any further, maybe we should have that question with the LCT before we start mm -hmm. right. assumptions and stuff, because we don't want to get stuck in something that we've said. No, I know. I'm just saying for find out. I mean, we hash this out for. Half a year when you're, you know, when Todd and everybody's on yeah. board. Yeah, and we tried to get it so we could do it. And then I think Gloria was the town clerk. Yeah. And at that time, nobody wanted to do the change, you know. But Char I mean, think charters change. Going, nowadays, yeah, I think it's better off than they do. Charters change more than just that part, though. That would end up in town meetings, which is a weird. Well, no, really, in town meetings, still have town meetings, so, yeah. but. But you can go into it, but I just let's let's ask the question LCT. to the LCT, and then we can readdress it and and have a bigger conversation. <coughs> what they say, 
I think that makes sense if we have all the facts first. Yep. Any other thoughts on the policy? Uh, for now, those are the hangups. Okay. Well, the nepotism one is um, done. That's right. We agree. So yeah, that's fine. Good. I'll send you the wording on the other that you can plop in there. And then we'll find out the answer to that other question. And then we should be almost there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if there's nothing else, we'll go right into correspondence. Mm -hmm. The first we have a letter dated April 9th, 2024 to the New Paint Select Board from Nancy Reese. Destruction plowing done along over entire property lines. I called Jay Wilson on Saturday, April 6th, 2024 to let him know how deeply upset I was with the destruction plowing that was done along my property line. I wanted he and Angela to make a visit and discuss with me. It is hard to understand why this would happen when all of land across the street from our home and our son's next door is unusable and wet. Why damage a resident's property? Jay did call me on Monday and said there were a few other issues as well and they would repair them as soon as things dried up. I'm hoping he will discuss some other safety concerns I've mentioned to him that also involve unusable land that could help to make things safer. Getting in and out of Bakerbrook Road and the beginning of the and the beginning of the road are very dangerous, especially with the increase in traffic and speeding. Getting in and out of the post office is also very dangerous. Debris laying right on the very edges of the road, it should be cleared away at least six feet or so from the road's edge, etc. etc. CCJ Wilson. I almost got run off the edge of the beginning of Bakerbrook Road twice. I almost got hit leaving the post office by someone flying up out of the gully of Dover Road. Nancy Reese. Um, if it's our board, I'll talk to Jay and then give her a call. And I'll, since she mentioned me, I'll just mm -hmm. pop in and have a visit with her if that's all right with her. And address the concerns. Yeah, that might be nice time. to have a show up and see. FaceTime. Mm -hmm. FaceTime is great. Got it. Uh, and then we have a letter from Timothy Schaefer, New Pain Health Officer, New Pain Vermont. He did it, had agreed to stay on for this particular <clears throat> project till it got resolved. And here's a letter from him dated March 27, 2024. Rental housing inspection update 26 Dover Road, Williamsville, Vermont. Tenant Barbara Mulmer, owner Robert Goldenhill. In response to a request from the tenant that I perform a fresh inspection on 324-24 to document the state status of multiple violations of Vermont State and New Fame Rental Housing Health Code previously documented on letters dated May 23, 23, June. 26, 23, July 23, 23, and August 8, 23. Additional reference made to the Vermont State Fire Inspector, Inspector Inspection of 725, 23, report on violations of the Life Safety Code of the Family and for Modifier and Building Safety Code. I found that there was no evidence in any effort to correct any of the deficiencies listed in the letters of July 23rd and August 8th. Specifically, one, there's no functional stove. Two, kitchen outlets are not GFCI as required under the building code. Three, the smoke and carbon monoxide alarms must be updated and hardwired in the loft and kitchen area as stipulated by the state fire inspector to meet building code. Four, stairs both internal and external still lack handrails and the stairway between the second and third floor needs a guard. Five, dryer vent material has not been converted to ridge, smooth sheet metal, or other non-compressible material as required. Six, rental housing code stipulates that all kitchen and vacuum facilities have a smooth, non-absorbent, non-corrosive, non-slip, waterproof covering, and that wood flooring has no cracks and a water-resistant finish. The bathroom has multiple broken loose tiles. The kitchen has wide floorboards with on-field and unsealed cracks. Seven, trash and recycling landlord must provide durable, covered, waterproof, animal-proof containers for trash, food scraps, and recycling. These have not been provided. There must be a provision for trash, recyclables, and food straps to be removed at least once per week. It is required that screens be present for all operable windows. Multiple windows do not have screens available. Nine, water supply. Landlord must provide evidence that the water supply has been tested for coliform within the last year and for inorganic chemicals and gross alpha within the last five. 
Vermont Lead Law, number 10, Vermont Lead Law, land landlord must provide evidence that an essential maintenance practices compliance statement has been submitted to the Vermont Department of Health. A copy of this must be submitted to the health officer and the tenant. Many areas of interior trim board and window wells have peeling paint. On the outside of the building, there is also evidence of extensive peeling. Landlord must provide evidence that both interior and exterior have been inspected and certified free of peeling lead-based paint. 11. The fire inspector determines that at least one window in the loft needs to meet egress, egress requirements of minimal dimension 20 by 24 inches with not less than 5 square feet of net free opening. This has not been addressed. In summary, landlord has failed to correct any of these deficiencies allowing onboard, ongoing substandard and unsafe living conditions. Additionally, landlord has never communicated any willingness or timeline to address any of these deficiencies. It is therefore appropriate if the tenant wishes to pursue this legally before the town board of health and the Wyndham Superior Court. Respectfully submitted, Timothy Schaefer. What shall we do? Where is this one then? Huh? This is the little soul job store. The public eatery. Would you like I... me to contact Dr. Schaefer? I have a few questions. One, I'd like to see the lease agreement. There isn't one. That needs, like, that poses a, a kind of a problem. It does pose a problem. Who's still in the fit about it? The guy renting it or the one that owns it? Uh, Ms. Molnar, Molnar is the one that's filing the complaints. There's the renters? Um, and my second question is, does the, is the house in the historic registry, does that have any bearing on some of those criteria? I don't know. Um, I'll that. So, <clears throat> if you'd like to send me your questions, I would be more than happy to call Dr. Schaefer and then reach out to the tenant. I don't even know how we get involved with that, but those are questions that I have. I have a book of um, health officer information I can go through and see. Uh, oh, right. And then I can forward this Testing. to VLCT and ask them for guidance as well. If you'd like me to, I'd be more than happy to. Well, you get the now acting health officer, yes. right? So, but Dr. Schaefer did say he would stay on stay until on. this one was completed, which was very wonderful of him. That is very kind. So <laughs> I, I can, I would be more than happy to take that on and email the um, information to the LCT to see what they have to say and report back. And if need be, call her and talk to her. Sure. Could you, when you, at, when you ask them those things, would you ask them what, what the town needs to be responsible for? Right. That's the first As question. Well. Right. And if you think of anything else within the next few days, just email me. I will probably have time Thursday or Friday to send an email. Okay. So that gives you time if you have any questions you want me to ask. Those would be my, like the historic piece was part of it. It's like, does a historic home need to follow all of those same rules because it's preserved or whatever those words right. are. I was thinking of like, like the Y floor boards and sealing them and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and you've emailed those to us, so I have those letters. Okay, great. Anything else for the town? If not, I'd like to thank everybody that was here tonight and everybody for their hard work. Stay safe and have a good evening. Till next time, we'll go into pay orders.